Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to My Deep Guide. Today we are taking a first kind of glimpse, I don't have the device, but I'm just covering the news, uh, very interesting and exciting news that we are going to have and a new e-ink device has been announced from Huawei and it's called MatePad Paper. So let's check out the material and the coverage and what we know so far and what we might expect from the Huawei MatePad Paper. All right, so what is the Mate pad paper from Huawei. Well, it is actually a very big deal because it is the first e-ink device from a larger smart device manufacturer such as Huawei is. And um, it's a 10.3 inch e-note taking capable device. So you're able to actually take your notes with it and a six core CPU and a six core GPU. So very, very powerful uh, CPU and a chipset uh, overall and 64 gigabytes of internal storage. It runs a Harmony OS 2 uh, operating system, which means that it will be able to load some uh, third-party applications, but it's not as wide as um, Android actually is. The one that we're seeing here is in the white color, which is really, really cool. So I'm uh, really, really digging the design here. Mostly we will see the black ones and the white ones, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. From here, I would like to talk a little bit about the design and the build quality. So right off the bat, it looks really clean and a nice, nice design. It resembles like a blend between a Note Air and a Remarkable, simply because that's how these devices have to be kind of made. And I like that they managed to avoid the area to look too much like Remarkable by not coloring that uh, edge on the side to be the gun metal or anything like that and also it runs a little bit of a different type of a shape as it doesn't have that heel the big heel on the side which is actually quite a nice technical achievement because you gotta kind of admire what they managed to do here and how they managed to squeeze everything into a device that's relatively thin now more on the design itself and this is a good frame to actually take a look so the design appears to be there's no guarantee but it appears to be metal at least on the sides because it's magnetic right so I don't know the front is probably some kind of a plastic cover or maybe just paint one thing that's very very noticeable is that this device made pa uh, made pad paper has a really really large screen to surface uh, ratio which is not the case with any other devices so so far the note air 2 has the largest screen to surface ratio but even that one is at around 70.5 percent made pad paper is at 86.3 percent now they achieve that by not having um, uh, the the holding edge as wide as the note air does which is something that i think might be a little bit of a tricky thing depending on how it's made because i actually prefer that wider side on the note air because it's very comfortable to hold but we'll see we'll have to see how it actually looks but one thing is for certain, it looks really modern and elegant and I really, really like the design of it. Super clean design, we just have that recessed power button which also doubles as a fingerprint reader. So the dual speakers will be here and here, which is a really smart way to actually put things into perspective, not just put them down, but you actually get them up and down and then you get a little bit, little bit of spatial control for the audio, which is a really cool thing to have and I hope that they're doing that. It is only 6.65 five millimeters thick and why do I say that it's only 6.65 millimeters thick when it's obviously thicker than the Remarkable and the uh, Note Air? Well it is because it has a significantly larger battery than either of the two devices at 3625 milliamps I believe and also it doesn't have that heel and it doesn't have that super wide edge so they managed to squeeze in a larger battery and all of the necessary electronics all underneath the screen basically and that is a very very cool technical achievement to actually get and it, that's something that I'm really curious to get my hands on and see how does it feel because when you have these thinner edges it might be um, might be beneficial to actually the writing experience because your hand won't have to rest so much on it so that's something that we'll have to wait and see but the first impression is that it's something that could be promising in this video you can actually see that other uh, display of where that protects 
kind of element comes, which makes it look fairly elegant. And you have the speakers and the power button. Towards the end, yes, we get to see a black version, we get to see a white version, and we also get to see this cyan, cyan blue version, which I really hope that we will get this full range that they are advertising here, because then that's something that we've been missing in pretty much any of the e-ink, current e-ink device ranges, which is they either come in, and I'm talking about note-taking devices, they either come in, um, yeah, one color and that's pretty much it, and there you go. Um, and that's something that I always lacked. That's something that I think was really needed um, because you maybe like a device, but you maybe want it to be white instead of black, or maybe you want it cyan blue instead of white or whatever. It, all I'm saying is that it's very, very nice. Immediately we see the benefits if they hold on to this option that we actually get the choice of three colors. If that happens, then you get the number one benefit of a large manufacturer, established manufacturer entering the e-ink playfield, which is they can afford to offer these options, right? Because a small manufacturer can't afford that. So this is a really cool thing to see. We can also see a little bit of the cover folio, the magnetic cover folio that it comes with. So that's something that's also nice. You get like a snap on top and I believe the other video shows that as well. Pen then magnetically attached to the cover folio, which seems to have Something also, another thing that I've missed, which is another flap to securely cover the, the device so that the cover doesn't open accidentally and also provides a little bit of security for that pen. There we go. So even if it is magnetically covered, when you put it in the purse or something, super simple solution, and but really effective because it ensures that your pen won't fall off. Or I guess that's the idea at the very least, but it's really cool to see innovation and kind of evolution of the currently accepted design norms and trying to push the envelope forward. Another thing that's very, very exciting to see how it actually pans out in the real world. Specifications are, as I mentioned, really, really good. And at the heart of the device is the Kirin 820E chipset, which runs the latest seven nanometer uh, technology. And it's a six core G uh, CPU and a six core GPU. So the CPU runs uh, three Cortex A76 core at 2.22 gigahertz and three Cortex A55 cores at 1.84 gigahertz and the graphics side of things is dealt with the six core Mali G57 um, GPU so it's it has also some other kind of things but the cool thing about this is that both the CPUs and the GPUs here have built-in hardware instruction sets for image processing which is something that they apparently have made good use out of which is something that we'll talk about a little bit later on. Uh, onwards with the specifications. As mentioned, it has beefy 4 gigabytes of RAM with 64 gigabytes of internal storage. It doesn't mention if it's expandable or not, but most likely it's not because I don't see any SD card slots there, but it does have an USB-C, which means that it most likely has USB-C OTG capability and you could expand it that way, probably. But then again, 64 gigabytes is quite a lot. It has a very beefy battery for the thickness and the weight because it's only 360 grams light. That's very, very light for a device of this size and uh, having a battery of 3625 milliamps, which is somewhere around here. There we go. And also it supports fast charging with 22.5 watts, which means that you can charge it for one and a half hours and then you have what they say six days of power but basically it's uh, it supports fast charging as mentioned it has the fingerprint sensor on the power button which is a really nice thing to see and it looks like very very similar to what the note 5 from books has and also the thing that i mentioned are the dual speakers and the placement of these dual speakers because either they are placed like at the at the bottom which doesn't make any sense because you're not gonna hear stereo difference at all so that that's like a completely useless uh use of two speakers on a design like this but 
in this case, they've actually opted to use it where it does make a difference and where it does make sense. So that's something that um, coupled with if the, the OS is using that, some clever and good audio processing for spatial audio uh, uh, um, capabilities and functionality, which that chipset is most definitely capable of, then we might actually look at a device that's able to also sound good. So thought behind that aspect was also demonstrated and implemented in the Mate Pad paper. Excellent thing to see as well. Really looking forward to trying that out. Screen on the MatePad paper is a 10.3 inch e-ink panel, but I'm not sure what type of the e-ink panel it is using and I'll explain why. First of all, it runs the same resolution as normally they do, 1872 by 1404, which means 227 ppi and it's monochromatic, it's not color. All right, that's out of the way. Now, why do I say that I don't know which one it is? Well, they specifically say that it has a texturized surface, which is great. So it does have a paper-like surface to provide the raspiness and the sound and the friction of paper, which is great. But they also say PMMA display panel. So that means not a glass panel on another glass surface to write upon, which is again excellent. But that also poses a question because Goody Reader mentions in their article when they're talking about the uh, MatePad paper, they say that it's Carta HD. But Carta HD is a glass panel and Carta HD traditionally needs to have a glass panel on top to make it rigid, protect it and all that kind of stuff because it's a very fragile panel. Contrary to that, we have flexible Carta, which is usually traditionally has PMMA display panel on top of it because it's more flexible, etc, etc. So I don't know which one, which case is the one in this, in this case of made pad paper. It might be that it's a Carta uh, flexible, but it also could be, it could very well be Carta HD, that it has a glass panel on top, but that we have a thin layer of PMMA um, display panel on top that provides that protection and also paper-like surface. Sort of like what we have on the Note Air 2 at the moment because that is a laminated surface on top of a glass screen. So you don't write on glass, you write on this PMMA surface, paper-like surface, that's applied on top of a glass panel. So that could also be the case that we have in uh, on made pad paper, but at this point there's simply not enough information to actually draw a direct conclusion so we'll have to wait and see. They also talk about it having a 32 levels of reading light. So it does have a front light, which is great, but it doesn't actually differentiate or define do, does it have a dual front light, meaning warm and cold color or light uh, uh, control independently from each other. It could, in this case, it could also go either way because we've had devices that had um, yeah, the, the, the single front light, single color front light, or dual color front light. So for example, traditionally, we do have dual color front light controls on 10.3 inch e-ink devices, and that's the preferred one to have. But we also have Kobo Ellipsa, for example, which is a 10.3 inch device, no ticking device, but it does have only single color front light. So the 32 levels is a standard thing, so that's pretty much the same thing, same level of control, but the coloration of the front light i don't know at this moment it doesn't say so hopefully it has a dual front light color control but remains to be seen now they are uh, using it appears that they are using the benefit of having such a powerful chipset built in and whenever you have a good chipset then it makes sense to actually utilize it and it seems that they have done so because they have two things that are really really impressive to me at least what i see if what is shown is real time and not processed and everything like that. So they have this smart uh, refresh, which is able to basically determine what it is that you're doing and adjust the refresh of the e-ink screen accordingly. So you can see that glide, that slide there is really, really impressive, like very, very small amount of ghosting, like almost no ghosting, super awesome performance. And also it seems to be capable of playing video content like a dedicated e-ink display device is able to do. So, so far, 
if these are not just you know manufactured marketing material images and it's actually what they've shown there is an actual representation of the performance of that technology that is very very impressive and the second part that's really really interesting with innovative technology is what they're calling Huawei e-ink display enhancement solution and basically what they're doing is they are uh, upscaling the grayscale so you have 16 grayscale uh, on a hardware level from the screen itself but it seems like they are able to reprocess that in some way to achieve a 256 grayscale effect so you don't get full-on 256 uh, grayscale but you get a 256 grayscale effect which apparently sharpens the edges of the letters and achieves nicer gradients in the images and that's something that i'm very much looking forward to see because if technology is utilized properly i believe that e-ink displays are able to deliver much much better things and much more versatile things than what we are offered right now but somebody has to get interested enough to develop processes, algorithms, and all of the things so that you output processed images to an e-ink display tailored for an e-ink display. Only when the technology is doing that, then you will start to utilize the maximum out of these displays. And this is why I'm extremely excited to see how does do these things actually perform in real life. And if there's what kind of differences do we have between a traditional display and this one? So yet another very, very exciting thing to see here. Thing that's a little bit less promising is uh, when I'm looking at the trusted reviews, when they uh, trustedreviews.com did um, like an announcement or first impressions of the device because they had a hands-on on it. And when I see the real life images, as you can see here, let me just zoom in a little bit more, uh, a bit less, there we go these reflections here well those are quite strong reflections and we have quite a bit of glare so we're actually catching the colors of reflections and we have quite a bit of glare here and no matter where you take a look at you see that there's quite a bit of reflectivity here now i don't know in which conditions this was actually recorded in but all i do know is whatever the conditions are it seems that the mate pad paper will have some struggling at least as far as the reflectivity of the screen goes at least from what i can see on these images you also take a little glimpse here about the tools that we have so we have several brushes which is a nice thing to see we have brush size and some other things here that i'm not sure what they are and some other controls here so it seems like it's going to be an interesting and functional notebook not just you know uh, 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 rudimentary bare bones which is a good thing to also take a glimpse at matepad paper comes with the huawei m pencil second generation which is a magnetic pencil has 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity and what they report 26 milliseconds low latency remains to be seen will definitely be tested on the desktop uh, what's more interesting to me is actually when i go to their own uh, yeah, presentation of the pencil itself it says that it should come with two replaceable tips a transparent one which looks rather rather pretty and the platinum coated nib right so that's the one that we see mostly yeah this this is a transparent one and this would be the platinum platinum coated tip so obviously it doesn't have replaceable nibs i don't know if they spend i mean some friction has to happen if you have a paper like uh friction to produce sound and texture so i'm not sure how that actually works maybe these tips uh spend but i don't know at what rate or how they will work because it's very very different technology than what we have on the traditional emr pens that also means that this is a pen that will need to be charged um in the description of this pen it says that it supports wireless charging on selected devices i didn't find the uh, uh, mate pad uh, listed as a supported device so i don't know if it will be able to have a wireless charging from the pen they don't mention that anywhere so most likely it doesn't have that ability but it is a pen that needs to be charged that seems to be the case 
As far as additional functionalities, it runs the their own Huawei Harmony OS 2. Um, so that's not an Android, but it does uh, support third-party apps. So probably not as wide support on an Android, but some apps will be there. I don't know which ones. It also has functionality to uh, mark the documents, which is a great thing to see. You have the ability to have split screen note taking at the same time. So you will be able to read the document and note take at the same time. Um, then you have the ability to uh, convert handwriting to text. Then you use that text and then you can paste it onto an email or some other app and then send it. So really, really handy uh, functionality. But this one is something that's really, really well thought out has the ability to uh, record voice which is fine books can do that as well but this is a part of a notebook so you're, you're able to actually record voice of a meeting and you have the ability to add something called click marks which basically marks the sections in the audio the, the uh, um in the audio recording like bookmarks and then i don't know what you can actually do it sounds like you can maybe associate some of the written things that you've been writing down while recording because that's the whole point you can record and take notes at the same time and add bookmarks in this thing and if you're able to actually associate these audio bookmarks to the sections of what you've been writing that is an incredibly powerful thing to have for recording uh, meeting memos or anything like that that is a one-stop shop to just have everything in one place a fantastic thing to kind of see and I'm really looking forward to actually testing that one out Additionally, it also has the ability to integrate with other devices. So it's cross device compatibility to transfer from your tra from your smartphone to the device, from your laptop to the device. And they also are pushing the, the idea of what they're calling their smart device approach, where if you have a Huawei laptop or a smartphone, then you can furthermore integrate and kind of share between these devices even more effortlessly. So that's their approach of integrating the mate pad paper into an already existing Huawei ecosystem. I already mentioned that it does have those um, the smart refresh rate and the uh, uh, the 256 grayscale effect and image sharpening, but it also has the uh, their own Huawei books, um, which is a bookstore with apparently two million uh, books in over 20 languages in over 170 countries or regions or whatever it is that they are saying so there seems to be a platform that has already been developed it's not something that you get a device and then you get like i don't know 10 ebooks on it and then like wait for a year until something happens so we seem to have again seeing the benefits of a big established manufacturer company and a brand taking a step into the e-ink world and we're seeing how that is supposed to look, which is a very, very welcome thing to see, at least on the surface of things, that we have an ecosystem that's already there. You don't have to wait for the platform to develop over updates and then cross your fingers and see what happens, where it actually looks like somebody has been thinking about this and developing it uh, for quite some time because it doesn't that's, that takes a little bit of time to kind of establish all of these things. As far as the writing uh, capabilities or basically writing experience, what can we expect from MatePad paper? Well, they're claiming super fast latency of 26 milliseconds, which would be on par with what Remarkable 2 and what Supernote A5 and A6X are able to do, which is fantastic. Uh, they're all also saying that you're gonna have a texturized surface with a paper-like feel so and a sound so those are all good things nothing bad there right well no nothing bad there of course that's all sounds really good but there's a little bit of an oddity here when you actually inspect the marketing material in the commercials and the video material that they show I've slowed this down by um, to to a quarter of real-time speed and in the next shot after this garbled stuff goes away, you will see that he is kind of waving the pen on top and the images that are appearing have nothing to do with what is actually the hand is doing. So in that first example, it's sort of noticeable, not that much, but you have to kind of go into, but here it's like really, really, really obvious that 
there's just some, the S appears magically and then just some kind of things. Okay, so this is an F sort of, and it's definitely um, not real kind of writing, which is fine because they are saying here, shape, interface, and functions are for reference only. The actual product may vary. So this is normal. This is not them trying to cheat or anything like that. This is marketing material and they are preparing this and maybe they couldn't film it properly or whatever may be the reason. So all I'm saying is that we have these discrepancies and not a actual depiction of what the writing experience should be like. And it's a weird one because what they depict on the marketing material seems to be worse than what the, the actual device is able to do. Usually when somebody has nefarious intentions, they do it the other way around. You know, they present that the uh, device writes incredibly quickly or something, and then you open it up and it's like, eh, not really. Here it's the other way around. It, it seems like disconnected and kind of weird, but we do have, fortunately, we do have one small shot, like a small glimpse of what it actually may be like. And they've issued this video here, which is like a very nice way to actually see it in real world. And here, I don't see those reflectivity issues that I've seen in the real world images of the tech uh, trusted reviews, trustedreviews.com. So here, for example, when I look at this one and she opens it up, you do have a glare, but you don't have super well-defined reflections. So this is a normal glare that I would expect from a, a surface like that. So we'll see how that looks like, but more importantly, paper-like writing. There we go. So now we have real world example of writing and it looks pretty good. This looks like it is, doesn't look exactly 26 milliseconds to me. This looks more like 40-ish, but we'll see. But either way, that's the only glimpse that we have in reality in real time, right? So you have a little bit of a delay here happening, but in that delay, since it's so perceptible, it seems that it's a little bit slower than what we get in realism in Remarkable 2 and Super Note A5, A6X at the moment. But by no means does it look bad. It looks more like on the 30-ish millisecond side of things. After that, we do have some more writing, but unfortunately it's the TikTok generation where everybody's like blah, blah. So uh, it has to be all sped up for people to have any kind of semblance of looking at it. So you have this sped up thing where you have some functionalities also displayed, and then you have this kind of writing example there, but we can't really discern anything from this. And as usual, Unfortunately, whenever anyone is demonstrating their device, they're not showing you actually writing. They're just showing either doodles or writing like with crayon gigantic letters. I wish that these companies, I, I wish more companies get into this whole e-ink thing and they start marketing it properly because the audience or the customer who wants to buy this, they're not going to do the crayon type of all screen writing and they're not going to just doodle. Of course, we are doodle, but you're buying it not for doodles. You're buying it for taking notes online, making drawings, making calculations, writing formulas and all of these kinds of things. And I think that would have been much more beneficial to actually see a company actually show how it looks like. So hopefully that's something that we might start seeing from these companies in the future who have now included. The price of Mate Pad paper is listed currently at 499 euros. So that should be something equivalent to around-ish, 499-ish dollars, maybe less. Um, but either way, it is in the same category price range as, for example, Books Note Air uh, 2 that it is. So that's a very nice thing to see. One thing that's kind of confusing is that on the good e-reader, the listed price is 759. But if you do your conversion, uh, you will see that this 759 actually corresponds to Australian dollars. So maybe that's what they have here as a pre-order price. Uh, it could be possible that this is listed as that. But it definitely doesn't 
cost 760 US dollars. Nope, that's not the case. It costs 499 euros. And it should be including both the pen and the flipbook cover for that price, which makes it a very, very interesting proposition. All right, so for me, when I start looking all of these things combined, more I look into the Huawei MatePad paper, more I am excited about it. This could be a good or a bad thing. Um, there's all, well, definitely the danger of uh, having expectations built up very, very high. And it promises to do a lot of things. Now, this is the first time that we're going to see a large scale established manufacturer of smartphone and smart devices entering and other things as well, entering the e-ink category of devices. So we've had Lenovo with that dual screen thing, but this is the first time that we have a dedicated device for e-note taking, not just e-reader, but e-note taking, which is a very, very cool thing to see. So I'm excited to at least see how does a big manufacturer, somebody who has a platform and ecosystem and all of, and experience and the money to actually do these things, how do they approach it and what are they able to deliver to the field of the e-ink devices. Additionally, I'm also interested to see if it does manage to deliver on all of the stuff that it does promise and it, and it does manage to push the benchmark higher, then it's going to be interesting Two things for me are very, very interesting. What are the established players going to do? Like the remarkable Supernote and the books, because they will have to play catch up and they'll try to, they will have proper competition here, right? And the second thing that's really interesting to see is, will this, if it's successful and if it gains a lot of traction, will this actually motivate the giants such as Samsung, for example, to venture into this uh, category of these devices. Because once that happens, then us as e-ink users, we're going to have a really good time because we're going to start seeing proper competition, proper development happening. And it's just exciting to see this because it's a chance. It's not a signal or anything like that, but it's at least a chance to have the e-ink technology and the e-ink devices break into the mainstream a little bit more. Now, if that happens, that would be very, very cool. Um, remains to be seen so far. I don't know, for all of these reasons and everything that I've uh, covered, well, the features and the functionalities and everything like that, I'm very excited about the MatePad paper. I don't have the ability to find it anywhere. I've tried to contact Huawei, but to no avail because no replies. So if you do have hints on how to contact them best, please do mention it in the uh, comments down below because I'm open for suggestions because I'm trying to kind of um, yep, see if they're interested in sending a review device to my deep guide, which would be a very interesting thing to see. If all of that fails, then I'll order it when it becomes available. And then we'll see it well later rather than sooner, but we'll see, uh, we'll see how these things develop. It's also going to be interesting for me to see if my daily organizer and how my daily organizer will work on the MatePad uh, paper. And that's a smooth segue into uh, if you don't know what my daily organizer is, well, all you need to do is check down the link down in the description below where you'll, where you'll see the link to the product and the link more importantly link to the playlist where you have playlist of videos with that describe what my daily organizer is and in short it's not an app it's a pdf hyperlinked multifunctional hyperlinked pdf that is your monthly quarterly weekly monthly i said monthly uh daily and all of these kinds of sorts of organizer that a lot of people are happy with and i'm happy that people are happy so and maybe that's something that will help uh, organize and better kind of put in order your personal, professional or whatever kind of areas of your life. So just check it out and see if that's a product for you or not. Either way, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video interesting. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.